Hello, hikers. <clears throat> Take two. Hello, hikers. Green Giant here, one of your hosts. Today, we're going to go for a walk. Might hear some sounds of civilization for a while as we get started um, because we are going for a hike on a private trail today. You can probably hear some cars in the background. We're at the bottom of a valley right now in the Pisgah National Forest. And the trail that we're on, I'm happy to report, um, is mine. Mine and Gamera's. <clears throat> this is where I've been putting in most of my miles this year. All right, let's stop at the first, first landmark. So we're actually still here at the house. Uh, probably about 20 feet away from my kitchen door. And uh, I'm at the start of what we like to call the bathtub trail. There's a cast iron bathtub in my yard. So before you start thinking I'm all fancy because I have my own trail or whatever, um, when we bought this place, it had, uh, well, the people we bought it from didn't do much with it. And they found it on uh, foreclosure because it had sat abandoned for about five years and the place had been ransacked by bandits and overgrown and it was kind of a mess. Uh, so uh, we've been working on it for the last couple of years. But one of the first things we found when we started cutting back the, the weeds and briars was this old cast iron bathtub. Um, it's been sitting here for about four years now and uh, I think it looks pretty good. We are now in the bathtub trail. All right, so what I'm walking on here is a slight incline that was clearly meant for some kind of vehicle travel because it's wide enough. Uh, and up here where it levels out, we've got an old stables and an old chicken coop. They're currently being used for really nothing other than just storing stuff. You know, like, oh, there's a wheelbarrow. There's my ladder. There's the scarecrow, Mr. Spooky. Uh, oh, here's an interesting feature. A giant, probably 50 foot long pine bough that crashed through the roof and has been laying here for two years because it's incredibly dangerous, I guess. Could be that I'm slightly lazy. I don't know, a little bit of both. Okay, we are now inside the chicken coop. Um, back when we started the show, I used to come up here when it was raining and record intros because the rain makes a cool sound on the roof. It's nice today, though. It's not raining. All right, we're going to stop here in a second and have a seat. Come into our first sitting spot. Got a little bench here. My wife built this bench. Gamera, she's the woodworker in the house. All right, I'm gonna sit on the bench. So I've got a little clearing here, probably about 300 feet away from the house now. And uh, when we when we initially got the place, this little clearing was completely, when I say completely overgrown, I mean, I literally had to take a machete to it for weeks before I could even walk from one end to the other. And now what we have here after four years of struggle and physical toil. <laughs> uh, I've got a nice old, I guess, I guess you'd call this a lawn, you know, it's mostly grass, it's flat. I've got a view of the Blue Ridge Parkway right now. Um, I mentioned earlier that we were in, in a valley in the Pisgah National Forest. So looking to the Blue Ridge Parkway, which is the other side of this valley that we're in. And I think if you were, if you were to run a piece of string directly from the tip of my nose to the road, probably about a mile, mile and a half of air between us. And then a little bit closer, there's another mountain that's like right across the quote unquote street from us. We've got one of those old two lane country roads that goes up to the parkway. On the other side from that, we've got uh, a pretty lovely mountain, probably about, I don't know, 
600, 700 feet tall maybe. Big wide mountain, catches the sun at night when the sun goes down. Makes it all orange and pretty. However, it does keep the sun away from us in the mornings. So we don't really get any light until about 10 o'clock in the summer. That's what it's like being in the bottom of a valley, I guess. All right, so we're gonna keep on walking here. And we're about to make a sharp left turn. Um, this, the property that came with this old abandoned place uh, was, you mostly know this from talking to neighbors and you know just things that are kind of obvious. Uh, this, I think they were going to take take the acreage and break it up into smaller parcels and build several more houses up here. Because there's a road that's cut that goes all the way from here to the top of our little mountain. That's what we're going to use as our hiking trail. Uh, this road, probably built about 15 years ago maybe. Um, just cut, you know, just cut dirt road side of the mountain completely unmaintained the entire time that it's been in existence. So, um, you would not want to drive anything up this road. <laughs> uh, trees, probably about 20, that was about 25 feet tall. A bunch of little saplings, five, six feet tall. But, uh, you know, basically young forest. So, definitely not drivable. Not without big machinery tearing all this stuff down. But we're not going to do that. We're going to let, let it recover. We're going to use this flat space as the basis for a hiking trail. That's what we're on right now, is that trail. It doesn't really have a name, but we've got some signs put up around various things to point to features and kind of pretend like we're a real trail. Uh, what I'm walking through right now is something called Turtle Gulch. We call it Turtle Gulch because uh, it is kind of gulch-like. You can tell... There was uh, <laughs> some drainage issues here a while ago. There's a big old ditch running through it. When it rains, this thing really gets going too. Class four rapid, you can step right across it. But uh, that's the gulch part. But every spring, this part of the trail is just full of turtles. When I say full, I mean like, you know, for as long as we've been walking right now, during this period of time, probably would have seen six or seven turtles by now. And they're all using this part of the property for some reason as their, as their spawning grounds. I catch them digging holes for their eggs all the time here. Uh, eastern, eastern box turtles. Or is it tortoise? I always get those mixed up. Somebody fact check me on that. Are they turtles or tortoises? The eastern box turtle, that sounds right. Which, as we all know, is the guide for whether or not something's correct. Does it sound right? Yes. Okay. If I sound like I'm a little bit winded, it's because we will be going uphill the entire time. I might have to stop and take breaks. All right. I continue on up the trail here. I'm surrounded right now by young... I, said, I, t I told you these trees were about 20 to 25 feet high. I didn't say what kind they were. Uh, mostly white pine. A couple of big, tall loblollies over here. Uh, when they built this road, the place was clear-cut, too. It left some of the big trees. So what we've got is a recovering forest that has maybe 50% of it is, you know, quote-unquote old growth, whatever passes for that on the East Coast. Some of these trees are clearly 100 years old. Most of them are about 20, though. There's some more of that road noise I told you we'd hear. All right, this part gets pretty steep. Oh, today is Thanksgiving. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. Happy Thanksgiving, hikers. It's a little bit after noon right now. Our turkey is not in. So we've got a relatively small one. And uh, I think it says it was only going to take about three hours to cook. And it's just the two of us. You know, we're being sensible this year. Not having anyone over. We were thinking about that recently, and you know, a lot of people have been very sad because they can't have their big Thanksgiving. And uh, you know, that was kind of when it hit me. That, oh yeah, like other people actually enjoy being in large groups. 
So this has been kind of, you know, somewhat easy for, for us because uh, my wife and I are, you know, not like recluses or anything, but, you know, we don't really do a lot of big gatherings. We do five, six people maybe. And that's just how we are. Whew, all right. <clears throat> Keep going. So, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, all the leaves are down. So, all that distant road noise, you can hear it a lot better. All right, we're going to take a break up here in a second. Alright, so this whole time we've been walking, uh, when we first moved here, when we first got the place, it would have taken me about, no exaggeration, about an hour to get to where I am right now. Just because it was, I mean, you could tell that it was a road, but it was completely neglected. Overgrown, you know, thorny briars. Just, you know, couldn't really see more than 20 feet. A lot of machete work. All right, so where we are right now is what I like to affectionately refer to as campsite number one. So this is actually, this is a campsite. I've stayed here before. Imagine the novelty of that. Get to camp in my own backyard. <laughs> okay, so this would be uh, the first, you know, well, since it's a trail now and not a road, we're going to call this the first switchback. Is where we change directions. We've been heading mostly south for the last couple of minutes since Turtle Gulch. Um, this would be, you know, there's probably enough room here. You could probably turn around a large truck. Mostly flat. Uh, I did spend a lot of time up here with pickaxe and shovel, getting one part of it very level, um, basically turning it into a tent pad. Uh, probably got about 500 pounds worth of stone arranged into a fire pit over there that's probably, I'm going to say like four feet in diameter, two feet high, uh, kind of a crescent shaped, more like a, a fireplace than a fire pit. <clears throat> Put a little concrete pad in front of it, just a couple of you know concrete bricks, just threw them down on the ground there. Um, got a couple of chairs up here too, it wasn't too hard to haul up some chairs and just leave them here. And there are a few tall trees and a big wall of rhododendrons right behind me that are providing some shade, which is nice. Uh, although it's kind of cool today and we don't really need it. But in the summertime, it's very nice to come up here and just sit under these rhododendrons and, you know, bring a book or just sit and, sit and listen. It's a white breasted nuthatch. And that's a distant bulldozer. Ooh. So I've been I've been sitting here for a few minutes. Um, I pressed pause so you wouldn't have to you know endure ten minutes of bird sounds. Oh no the horror, right? But uh, I pressed pause, sat here for a while, and a little tiny flock of juncos landed. Probably about six or seven of them. Uh, juncos are these little gray birds. They have dark gray eyes, or dark black eyes, dark gray feathers, white chest. They're teeny tiny, and they like to stay on the ground. You see them hopping around, uh, pecking around in leaves. Uh, they like pine straw, just looking for little bugs and stuff. They like to stay low. Um, they usually come down here when it's cold at the higher elevations. So uh, if I were to go up to the parkway today, it would probably be at least 10 degrees colder up there. They're probably at five, 600 feet higher elevation than we are, maybe 700.
Okay, a lot of that noise that you hear in the background uh, that might sound like road noise is actually a creek. Uh, there's a creek that runs through the bottom of this valley, and especially when the leaves are down, you can hear it really, uh, really clearly. Just that gentle whoosh in the background. Um, but that, it's definitely a car. Anyway, um, we're going to hike a little bit more and uh, get deeper into the woods. So up here past campsite number one, which, well, as I mentioned, looks like it was probably built for a big truck turnaround. You know, I'm sure when they were going to build up here, that's what this originally was. Uh, once we start getting uphill from here, they didn't clear cut as much. So we'll get a lot more, uh, a lot more taller trees, a uh, little bit more of the native species. So down low, pretty much, for, you know, between the house and here, we have a lot of, um, like a lot of tulip poplars and vines and, you know, the kind of things that, that show up, you know, in the 20 years after a, a forest gets completely cut. You know, the trees that grow really fast and, and the vines, a couple of invasives. Uh, we have one mimosa tree, which is definitely not from here. Um, and it's kind of in a weird location. Like I'm not, I don't think it was planted on purpose. It's like out in the middle of a place that you can't really get to from, you know, uh, by, on foot easily, but you can see it. And the mimosa tree, I think they originate from Japan, uh, somewhere from that, from the Eastern hemisphere. Uh, and they get pretty big, like the size of a, of a medium sized maple perhaps. And their leaves in the summertime uh, are almost fern like they're very very green and they have you know many segments the way a fern does and then around july i think july to august they start to flower and the flower is just this very beautiful delicate pink fluffy it almost looks like you know the white fluffy bit that a dandelion turns into before it blows off in the wind they look like that but they're pink and the smell that comes off of them is almost sickeningly sweet, but it's a really pleasant smell. Uh, it's like perfume, but not overpowering. Um, and you can stand downwind of this tree uh, for, you know, maybe 50 to 100 feet if the breeze is blowing right, and just breathe it in in the summertime, and it just smells so beautiful. Uh, but people hate them because they're not from here. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're something that you don't hear often in this part of the world. No. Uh, yeah, they don't like these trees because uh, they're not from here, and they're very, very good at reproducing. So if you don't keep your, keep your eye on them, before you know it, you'll have an entire yard full of them. And I just got really quiet because I heard what might be a deer. No. Could be a squirrel. Something's hopping around back there in the leaves. Anyway, um... Let's get let's get up into the into the local forest and see what we can find. All right, let's get going. I'm using a stick as a walking stick today. Instead of using my instead of using the traditional carbon fiber trekking poles, I've gone with something a bit uh, more modern and Found a stick on the ground. I'm gonna use that. Okay. Here we are at yet another sitting spot. Can you tell that's my favorite thing about hiking? Um, I can actually see from where I'm standing. I can see campsite number one. It's only a few steps away. And this is a spot that I call Giant's Rest, named it after me. Um, when, when I was originally clearing this trail, started about four years ago, uh, a lot of these trees that are around me right now, the ones that I have to crane my neck to look up to, 
were barely as tall as me. In fact, I did a lot of this with a machete, just hack through those saplings. Uh, and then right where I'm standing, I found, I just, I just decided, random, I'm just gonna take this little 10 by 10 square area and just hack down all the saplings. It's like just a, a little sitting area connected to the trail. And uh, just been keeping it clear for the last couple of years. And as the trees grow up around it, it's now like a little, it's like a little room that's connected to the trail. You can just step off to the side here, one, two sides. I've got trees, got a little clearing here where I can see a nice little view. Giant's Rest. And good little spot to sit too. All right, so I'm gonna come back out here, back to the main trail, AKA the road. And as I look up, I can see it's gonna go probably about the same distance that we came from Turtle Gulch. And then there's probably, an, there's I say probably like I've never done this before. There's probably another turnaround up there. Uh, we're not gonna stay on the road this time though. We're gonna, we're gonna go off trail. Remember I said there were a bunch of signs that point to stuff. We have a sign here. It says KT Challenge Connector. KT is uh, Katie, that's my wife. Gamera. All right, we're just gonna go up the side of the hill here. All right, now this is a little more trail-like because we are now really like in the trees, stomping on earth, not at some old road. And it's a little steeper, so I'm gonna go a little slower. Good thing I got my stick. Okay, Gamera actually built stairs into this trail, uh, like trail style stairs. Just a couple of logs supported by some stakes pounded in, leveled with a pickaxe. So this is all proper trail here. Okay, now we're following the contour of the hill for a bit. A lot of switchbacks on this one. Okay, here we come to our first interesting thing. So the remains of an old hemlock. Got a bunch of hemlocks here in these woods. And surprisingly, some of them are actually still pretty tall and green, but as many of you know, most of the hemlocks on the East Coast are on their way out. The woolly adelgid, I think I said that right, that was, uh, is infesting hemlocks all over the East Coast. And what I'm standing beside here is probably about 40 feet of old hemlock trunk. And as they die, the trunk stands and the branches all just fall off and they pile up at the bottom. So you'll see all of these big old trunks just sticking out of the ground like some kind of weird needle. Little spiky remnants of their branches sticking out every two or three feet. A big old pile at the bottom of them. Well, you probably don't see too many of those on uh, hiking trails because a lot of people We'll take those big piles and use them sensibly as firewood for the camp. I mean, why not? And uh, that's what I always do. So, I um, guess that's what will happen to those. I mean, there's a campsite right there. All right, we're still going up. Still going up. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're actually in some woods now. You know, not some old road. We're surrounded by trees. But you can also kind of tell where this had been logged many years ago. Because there's a lot of stumps. A lot of big stumps. You know, like some of the trees that are standing. Here's one of the big ones. Big tree still standing. I'd say that's probably about three feet in diameter. But I see a couple of stumps that are like five feet. I cut down some big trees a while ago. There's my first fall of the day. I think I'll be all right. Okay, speaking of falling. Oh, good thing I didn't do it right here because there's a big old pile of bear shit. You don't want to fall in that. 
yeah, we do have bears here. Uh, in fact, I've got, uh, eventually we're going to get to one of my trail cams that I've been tracking a family of bears for the last couple of years. We've got one mama and three cubs. And I think that mama and two of the cubs have grown up and moved on, and one of them has claimed our yard as its territory. So we've seen one bear over the last couple of years getting slightly larger and pooping more. Okay, we are at yet another sitting spot. And we're still, still just getting started. Uh, it's this big old rhododendron bush out in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by tall oaks. And Gamera carved a little squiggly trail that goes from this trail over to that rhododendron. There's a secret sitting spot in there. Sometimes there's a grouse in there. All right, we are still ascending. What I'm walking on right now is a mix of pine, pine needles and oak leaves. Makes a very lovely sound. It is going to be December in a couple of days, and there are still crickets chirping. I don't believe that's right. Well, I guess the woodpeckers have to eat something. Okay, hey, we have a, a feature to demonstrate. We have a tree with a rope hanging between it and another tree and a bell on it. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Here's a tree that has what appears to be a goblin entrance in it. Looks like a little tunnel. If I were a goblin, I'd live in there. Some more stairs. Thank you, Gamera. We made this trail. Uh, Oh, actually, almost a year ago. Uh, she and I came out here and started sort of on opposite ends. You know, she'd hike to some point and I'd hike to some other. And we'd do it this time of year because we can see very far with all the leaves down. And we would just yell, hey, I'm over here. Can you see me? Yeah, I see you. I can show you. And we just get the machetes, get the hand saws, and just start, just start working towards each other until we meet in the middle somewhere. We built this trail two, three hundred feet at a time that way. It was something fun to do when the quarantine started and continued. And now we are enjoying the results of it. All right. We're almost at the top of this connector here. We've actually come to a flat spot. First one we see in a while. Okay. Here's the sign to let us know we're at the other end. All right. And I piled up some rocks here to make it look pretty. Uh, and then I found, so, you know, I mentioned we had to hack our way through to get to all of this. And uh, where I am now is actually a nice long level. I wouldn't say flat, but we're not going to really gain or lose much elevation here. And it looks like this might have been at one point a road they used to pull some of the big trees out. Now, I mean, it was barely wide enough to, you couldn't have two people walk side by side, but it's clearly a flat, long, you know, at some point, it was a road. So I'm headed north again. It's 
So when we left the campsite, we just went basically straight uphill in a westerly direction. So I've turned right, I'm headed north. Uh, what do I see right now? I see a lot of trees with no leaves left on them, uh, mostly tulip poplars. There's a couple of young, uh, young yellow locust. Uh, those are interesting because when they are, when locust is a sapling, or even, you know, even, you'll see it even when they're like almost 20 to 30 feet tall, uh, big around as your forearm. Once they start getting bigger than that, this interesting feature goes away. But when they're small, they're very, very spiky. Uh, like if you grab one to support yourself, like if you, if you, you know, lose your balance and reach out and grab one of these things, you will bleed. Uh, it's just giant pokey thorns. They call it devil's walking stick. And it turns into locust, which is very pretty. Uh, excellent firewood, excellent building material for fence posts, telephone poles. Uh, it's got a really pretty leaf, too. So, uh, right now those are all bare, though. And then, here's something interesting. I see a holly tree about 20 feet off the trail. I'd have to really, really bushwhack to get to it. But it's very healthy. Bright green, waxy leaves. Very pretty. It'll keep its color all year. Still continuing north. This is all, all cleared by hand. All machetes and hand saws. Okay, what we're coming up on next is a one, two, three-way junction and a sitting spot. So this flat part points to Another flat spot where I've got some tray. I see. I can see it now. Yeah, I've got a couple of uh, folding chairs sitting there. Looks like something knocked one of them over. Uh, this is also where I keep the trail cam. Ooh, somebody's having fun on their motorcycle. This is where I keep the trail cam. So I'm going to pause for a little bit, uh, check in on that, see what kind of critters have been up here, and then I'll be back in a minute without a motorcycle and some animal updates. Stand by. Okay, I'm back with some animal updates. This is actually pretty exciting. Um, I've been tracking, I think the camera's been here for about a month now. I'd like to move it around. But I have been tracking for a while a, a family of deer. Uh, we've got a six point buck, a couple of adult does, and uh, I think they have, there were two more baby fawns this year. So, uh, you know, sometimes we'll see four or five of them all traveling together. And uh, I had a couple of videos of them, which was fun. Uh, no sightings of the bear this time, but um, holy shit, we got a freaking bobcat. Um, just as clear as day, too. Like, he walked right in front of the camera, so you could see him, you know, the butt of this thing walking away. And uh, no, this is not just, you know, somebody's house cat that lost part of its tail. We got... We got a bobcat up here. Um, I actually have one other video of this elusive cat that was captured. Um, actually, where we're going, uh, where our, our, the destination of our hike. Um, I captured a video of the bobcat up there about three years ago. And it was just, you know, it was like a, one of those blurry Bigfoot videos. You know, like just a tiny little corner of it disappearing out of the screen, you know, at the start of the video and then nothing else. But you had to like freeze frame and zoom in. And hence, like, holy shit, that was a bobcat been looking for that thing for years he was here uh two days ago two night two nights ago actually right where i'm standing that's pretty cool um and it has got plenty to eat too because i have seen um, moles and voles and um you know that might explain why i've seen half of a squirrel up here before too um hmm, i just thought that was my neighbors i don't know all right um as soon as i figure out where i put my walking stick we're gonna get moving again it's one of the disadvantages to this new high-tech gear you put it down and it just blends right in oh well there's one that looks just like it all right here we go This is 
the last long part that's steep. The final switch back, we're headed south again. And the sun is in my face, which is actually kind of pretty. Um, the brim of my hat is guarding my eyes. But I can see the sun coming directly toward me through many layers of trees. And it's lighting them in a very pretty way. It's making them kind of sparkle a little bit. It's kind of nice. Okay, so now that we're a little higher up, probably a couple hundred feet elevation above where the house is. Excuse me, I'm gonna to touch the microphone. <coughs> Now that we're a little bit higher up, probably about two or three hundred feet elevation gain from the house, uh, now we're starting to get up into the older, I call it the local forest. This is where we start seeing a lot more hickory, a lot more oak, different types of oak too. Mostly white oak and something called chestnut oak, which is really pretty too. Uh, you can't really tell much difference just by looking at the, the bark. You can tell if you cut them down, different color on the inside, but we try not to do that if we don't have to. Uh, the leaves are very different though. The leaves of the chestnut oak, especially when they're, when they're very mature, will be, the, just one leaf will be the size of your torso. And it will look like a, like a fan with little rounded edges. It's a big leaf for an oak tree. It's a very slow growing hardwood. And when you see the saplings, you know, not even as tall as you are, but you can't cut those with a machete. You try and it's just like steel cable. They're just so strong. And then when they grow up to become enormous, there's these massive, these are the trees that you see that just like sprawl, you know, they're just huge. Got a couple of them way high up here on the top. A couple of smaller ones here where we are. Still going up. So I'm, I'm back on what used to be a road, but is now home to small trees. And the path that Gamera and I cut through this winds back and forth. It's not, it's not a straight shot for very long. And we do that for erosion control. Uh, water, when it rains, will just naturally follow the path that we, that we walk on, whether we want it to or not. So if we can avoid long straight stretches, that downhill water never really has time to build up enough momentum to really carve the mountain too much. And then every, oh, I don't know, 100 feet or so, I'll put in a water bar, which I'm not really supposed to do. Um, I guess the trail maintainers say that's not an advised technique anymore. I'm not sure why, but we've got them. And it just pushes the water off to the side. And then since this was a road, every once in a while we get a pipe. So that's nice. So I feel like this is going to be here for a while. All right, coming up near the top here. Ooh, look at that. Grasshopper. The end of November. Okay, here is our last intersection before we get to where we're going. Got another sign here. This is pretty. Here at the base of this tall oak tree, some ferns, this little hand-painted wooden sign on a metal post. To the left, fish hook loop. To the right, heartbreak ridge. Oh boy, heartbreak ridge. Damn it, that's where we're going. Okay, here we go. Fish hook loop. Uh, if we were to turn left here, this is the very first ever footpath that we carved on our little hill. 
do that with my buddy Travis, who has the trail name of Fish Hook. It's also named that because I was very overgrown with thorny briars when we were making this trail. We get snagged a lot. So it's probably about a quarter mile loop that gets us to where we're going. Swings around, comes back to the top of, if we go right here, Heartbreak Ridge, really just a couple hundred more feet. So this is shorter, but it's steeper. Here we go. Got some, got some stairs here, some wooden stairs that Gamera built. This is the last of the road too, by the way. All right, first time I ever hiked up here, I had to stop, uh, you can't see, but I had to stop right here because it just ends, like that's it. They stopped, stopped making a road. And you can see, just a little bit up, not even just like 50 more feet, you can kind of see, like, oh, it looks like that might be a flat spot. You know, but so many, eight to 10 foot saplings crowded in six inches apart from one another, you know, basically just, you know, porcupine hair. <laughs> Can't see through it. Spent a couple of weeks with a, with a hacksaw and a machete working my way up here. And then I found a little clearing that I think was probably gonna be a home site because it's big enough for a house for sure. And this is where the road stops. <sighs> All right, and then we spent, Gamera and I spent the next, oh, probably two or three years. You know, well, we spent the first year just trying to hack our way up here. Then we spent the next two or three years. I brought up a chainsaw a couple of times, you know, hacksaw, machete, all that stuff, shovels, pickaxes. And we got this cleared out. Oh, geez, probably, oh, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out like how big of a, space this is about the size of a of a volleyball court <laughs> yeah but this you know how about this how about the size of a small shelter plus three or four tents yeah that's what we've got room for here and it's at the very top so we're not going uphill anymore and there's enough of a clearing that i've got about 180 degrees view and that mountain across the valley that i talked about when we were down at the bottom i'm almost at eye level with it now so we're up here at the top. It's much quieter, especially when I stop talking. Breathing in your ear. Got a little fire ring up here. Got a whole bunch of firewood. This is the upper campsite. I'm take off my pack. I'm gonna put the microphone down. We're just gonna soak in some ambient noise for a while. I'm gonna sit here and relax. Listen. I'm gonna have some lunch. It's two o'clock and we're probably eating turkey around six. So I'm gonna eat the sandwich that Gamera made me and then we'll walk back down. We'll do that in a little bit. I hope you heard that. That's our 
a resident pileated woodpecker. I, I run into him up here quite often. He's got a pretty big territory, and uh, our yard is part of it. Saw a couple of other woodpeckers too while I was eating my lunch. Saw two downy woodpeckers flying around the clearing that I call the upper campsite. Just a few steps away from there right now. In fact, I can see it from here. Oh, maybe not even a hundred feet. Uh, we are in in the tree line now. We are in the woods, back out of the clearing, in and among the trees. What I've got here are well, I'm sitting on a stump, and I have to my left. A big, a like hundred foot tall hickory, just as straight as a post. And then to my right, probably about 20 feet away from that. That's about <clears throat> somewhere between 15, 20 feet. Big old maple, sprawling thing. Uh, two nice mature trees, nothing on the ground in between them. And then hanging from each tree about six or seven feet up. Oh, that looks like a hammock strap. It sure is. Yeah, I put some hammock straps up here, so I come up here sometimes and just uh, just kind of chill out. In fact, this bench that I'm sitting on, or the stump that I'm sitting on right now, uh, is where I sat as I wrote all of my second book, pretty much. Um, and I did some revisions down at the house in, in the office, but this is where I would come up to create and sit and be quiet and think, <clears throat> take naps, <laughs> swing in the hammock. Um... So this is, uh, you know, just another little clearing. Probably room for about three hammocks if you if you look around and pick the trees correctly. Um, you know, I've had uh, my buddy Travis has come over and camped a couple of times. I've camped up here. Um, oh, there he is. Yeah, sounds like we picked up someone's truck in the background there too, but uh, this thing's got a really sensitive microphone. Yeah, that pileated's just flying around, letting people know he's here, letting other birds know, hey, this is my territory. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, Travis. Yeah, Travis has camped up here a couple of times, and so have I. So uh, I always like to have room for people to, to camp out if they want. <clears throat> Still don't see him, but I definitely I can hear him. He's getting closer. They do that when they're when they're flying. Every almost every wing stroke they make that that caw sound. So he's really flapping fast. Every one is a wing flap. I've seen him. I've seen him do that. All right, he's gonna be quiet for a while. I think I will too. Well, it is Thanksgiving, so I suppose that's the requisite time to reflect upon what one is thankful for. I mean, I, I kind of I try to do that. Um, I try to do that every day, actually. I try to, you know, my, I, I talk about my friend Ninja Mike said, you know, be grateful for today. I take that shit to heart, man. You know, I I try at least once a day to think about how fortunate I am. Uh, and uh, I hope that you guys do that too. Um, I am thankful for uh, a lot of things. Um, I mean, I'm super grateful that I have, uh, you know, a house to fix up and a trail to work on. Um, you know, I mean, it's a lot of work, but I'm grateful that I was, that I even had the chance to do it, you know, to make the effort. Um, I am grateful for 
Gamera, who is uh, downstairs right now. I, I say, okay, <laughs> I say downstairs. Uh, here I am up on top of the hill, probably, I think we figured out that it was like 500 feet elevation above the house. And let me look at my step counter here. We walked about three quarters of a mile together today. Um, so uh, what, what was I going with that? Oh, so yeah, I'm, here I am up on a hill three quarters of a mile from the house. And uh, I refer to this as upstairs and the house is downstairs. I, I don't know why. That's just what I do. So anyway, uh, downstairs, Gamera is downstairs and I am grateful for her. So <laughs> it took a while to get there, but we did it. Um, uh, and, and, uh, I'm, you know, I'm grateful that we have a kitchen to make good food in, which is going to happen really soon. Um, I know we're not doing big gatherings this year. I hope uh, that you are at least having the chance to enjoy a meal with a few people who you love because that is important. So, uh, somebody's dogs are barking. All right. Speaking of good food and it is. It is about three o'clock on Thanksgiving. I think this is usually, this is, I never understood this part of Thanksgiving. People sitting down to have dinner at three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, actually, you know, if you, now that I think about it, if that means that your relatives leave around sunset, that's probably why that tradition started. Um, you know, get them out of the house early, you know. Uh, so, so they can safely travel home, uh, of course. Uh, that's why. But uh, anyway, we're, you know, since we're just doing the two of us, we're having dinner at regular dinner time, which means I should probably get down there and uh, and help out. I say that like it's a thing I don't want to do, but I actually love kitchen stuff. So I'm looking forward to going down there and putting on an apron and uh, doing turkey things. So I'm going to do that. And it's probably going to take about 20 minutes or so to walk from here to the house. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we could have taken something called the fish hook loop to get to this upper campsite. About another quarter of a mile foot footpath. And I think I'm going to take that on my way down. But most of that trail is, like I said, we're in the woods. So a lot of that's going to be like this. Which, I guess, I mean, if you want to hear, like, 20 minutes of that, here, I'll give you a sample, and you can just put this on a loop. Okay, I can only imagine you wouldn't get, you would get sick of that after a while. So, uh, I'm gonna do that by myself, <laughs> and enjoy some crunching leaves. And, in the meantime, I'm gonna leave you guys with some ambient sounds of the woods. And I hope that you enjoy your Thanksgiving. And uh, if I didn't already say so, I'm grateful for you. I don't know if I said that or not. And if I'm saying it twice, uh, I'm going to say it twice. I'm grateful for you guys. I know it's been a while since we've made a show. And uh, I still check to see if people are listening. And I'm always amazed that they are. So thank you for doing that. I'm grateful for you. Uh, and with that, I'm going to leave you with some ambient forest sounds, and we will talk again sometime in the future. Happy trails.
Over the river and through the woods To Green Giant's house we go The bear knows the way, but not in the day The deer want to eat our tomatoes Someone left some kind of device out here in the woods. Who the hell is it? 